My name is Dale Murden. I'm a citrus grower down here in the Rio Grande Valley, third generation native son of South Texas. So graduated from high school in 1980 and started my career in citrus in 1983. That's been my passion ever since. We are right on the Rio Grande River, south of Far, Texas, in a grove that uh, is one of my favorite places in the valley. You get a little bit of everything down there. Ran across a wild hog a minute ago and a snake. I think everybody knows Texas grows the sweetest citrus in the world. It's just our latitude and longitude set well for growing citrus. You know, if the weather cooperates, there's nothing sweeter than a Texas grapefruit. So 70% of what we grow down here is this Texas Real Red Grapefruit. It's that nice dark red grapefruit that we're famous for. Some people still call it the Ruby Red. The other 30% are various oranges, late oranges, early oranges, things like that. Growing citrus is a year-long thing. These trees will start to bloom, which is forming next year's crop in about February. You're growing your fruit all through the summer, and then what you see here is the result of that bloom. You know, harvest again could be anywhere from four months to six months. We'll start in early October, late September, and run into about April, May. It's a still all picked by hand. It's a labor-intensive crop. They really haven't come up with a good way to mechanize harvest yet. Typically, 60% of it's going to go fresh, 40% of it's going to go juice. They haven't come up with a good way not to beat that fruit up yet, so we're still picking it by hand. You know, I'm optimistic. This is a really good-looking crop. I'd say we're probably at half of our normal production. We look to probably have about 7 million cartons of citrus this year, which average, you know, back before the freeze, we were up to 14 million. So while it's down, the quality is excellent and the size is excellent. So real optimistic about this year. Uh, I think the, the season has started off very well. Citrus the last five years in Texas has kind of been the perfect storm. In 2020, we had Hurricane Hannah, knocked all the fruit on the ground. 2021, we had Winter Storm Uri. I'm not sure when we started naming winter storms, but that one was Uri. We called it the Valentine's Massacre. We've been in a period of lingering drought, water battles with Mexico. That puts you behind the eight ball when you can't water your crops. Water battles have been something probably going on my whole life maybe since the treaty actually started. 1944, two treaties were done, the Colorado River and the Rio Grande River. Colorado Riverside, the headwaters are in the United States, goes into Mexico. We pay them about 1.5 million acre feet a year. The Rio Grande Treaty, the headwaters are in Mexico, namely the state of Chihuahua. They owe us 350,000 acre feet a year on this side. Rarely, if ever, anymore do they willingly make a payment unless they have overflows and can't capture it. Currently, they're behind getting close to a million acre feet of water going into the fourth year of a five-year cycle. It really prohibits you from doing any planting at all. You know, do I plant trees? Do I not plant trees? Do I water this crop but not this crop? Very difficult to plan your future when you can't count on what a treaty obliges them to do, and they just refuse. They're growing agriculture in Chihuahua by leaps and bounds. The vegetable side... Well, they've already had to cut back and lay people off. They can't go into the spring thinking they can plant onions or watermelons or vegetables without water. Uh, it's very serious, very serious. Oh, we're losing ground. Uh, the sugar mill just went out of business. 52 years in business and they're gone. The question is, is citrus next? Well, I hope not. We're in the worst shape going into a winter and next spring than I've ever seen. Lake levels are at about 20%. Typically during the summer, there's a storm event that'll bring those levels up. Didn't happen this year. Chihuahuas used it all up down there. Uh, they're in the situation now, probably they don't even know what they're gonna do. They use the water. You know, citrus has been here 120 years. Uh, you, you, you just don't wanna think about that happening. I try to think uh, positive, farmer optimism, right? State Department needs to bring Mexico to the table however they need to bring Mexico to the table. There's always trade agreements, there's always deals. You've got uh, USMCA negotiations coming up. Somehow, some way, the State Department needs to draw a line in the sand and say, look, we always comply with our obligations on the Colorado side. Why can't y'all on the other side? I mean, it's just common sense. When I started in the 80s, we had, you know, probably close to 100,000 acres of citrus. Now we're down to you know, arguably about 25. You know, in spite of all that, there you are. You know, pictures worth a thousand words. You don't even need to talk to me. Just 
take a picture. Is this going to be the last citrus crop? No. I'm not even going to think that way. No. Not on my watch. I'm not going to go down without a fight. 